So weird condition, uh, one is the passivity condition already unusual yeah. and then there is the zero state observability condition which is not too unusual. Uh, let me see if I can try to sort of uh, justify this, uh, let me see, I am not sure if I can. Uh, Let us go to the sort of linear system case, yeah and also we will test this condition in example, so you will anyway you know figure it out how to use it. Yeah, it is almost like this LaSalle invariance condition, yeah, it looks like that if you see. You have a set which is some function equal to 0 and you are saying it does not contain anything but the trivial solution that is the 0 solution. Okay? Uh, so, uh, and, and what is it a solution of? It is a solution of this system, the uncontrolled dynamics. Huh? So is this, this whenever you put the control to 0, you are saying it is the uncontrolled dynamics. Okay, no solution of this uncontrolled dynamics is here except the equilibrium, the zero solution. Okay? Equilibrium itself is a solution, okay? it is a trajectory, well not this but this, but still a trajectory. Huh? Okay, is that clear? Okay, great. Now let me try to sort of at least <laughs> make sense of it and try to connect it with our linear system idea. Yeah, this is our uncontrolled linear system, LTI system and our output, typical, right. Of course, we uh, assume things like you know X in Rn, Y in Rp and all that, yeah. same deal, typically P will be less than N, yeah, less measurements than states, yeah. Uh, great. Now, let us see, how do you um, write the solution in this case, it is Xt is e to the power At x0, correct, just the using the exponential. So this will give me the output is c e to the power a t x0, right. So how do we, why do we have the uh, observability matrix condition? Because if I expand this, yeah, what is it? Identity plus uh, a t plus a squared by 2 factorial t squared and so on multiplying x0 right and of course you can already start to see huh? i can write this actually i can write this as an infinite series if you want this is c c a c a squared multiplied by some something here yes yeah and what you have here is the controllability matrix uh, sorry observability matrix yeah I, it does not have to be infinite length because of, I can make the infinite length into finite length y, this guy, do not need to check this infinite matrix and only need to check the finite matrix y, just two words, name of a person, a theorem, y, y can I shrink this infinite, because this is infinite, right? I hope you believe that this is an infinite series, so obviously it is an infinite length matrix, but your typical controllability, uh, ob typical observability uh, matrix is only till what? C, C A squared until C A n minus 1, okay, why? Just due to Cayley Hamilton theorem, yeah, because all the higher powers are anyway you can write them as smaller powers. So, no need to write all the powers. Huh? Okay. So, this is the observability condition, all right. Great. Uh, now, uh, why this? So, let us see what is the set, this set in this case, okay. What is the set in this case? It is uh, in the linear case, I am saying that x in Rn, hx is equal to cx is equal to 0, okay. 
So, if I use my solution this is actually equal to the set of uh, x 0 in R n such that uh, let us see c c a c a n minus 1 Okay, because everything else is now independent of uh, states, right? All all this quantity, this is all independent of states. It contains what? It contains time and this matrix, right? Because once I use Cayley Hamilton, I will just have some complicated functions of time here. Huh? Is that fine? Just complicate. By the way, each of these will be infinite series inside this, but we don't care about all that. Huh? The idea is this. Uh, in fact, in fact, I don't think this is writable like this. We have to write it in a different way. Hmm. This is uh, because this is not compatible operation anymore. Huh? X zero is in R n, and this is the di what is the dimension of the Gramian? Sorry, uh, the controllability observability matrix. Number of rows is kya Number of rows is p. Number of columns is n. It's a p cross n matrix. Hmm? It is a p cross n matrix, right. So, um, I think you will have to write this not like this. I apologize, I am going to erase this for those who copied already. Uh, this is just uh, doing vector math, I am not doing anything magical. This is x0 transpose uh, c c a. C A N minus 1 transpose times this vector equal to 0. Yeah, you will get something like this. Okay, you will get something like this. Why I just did if you notice this is now compatible, right? Compatibility is huge result. Why this is a 1 by n, right? This is n by p right and this is whatever this is whatever dimension huh? this is of course uh, appropriate to make it a scalar right okay so this is fine this is now compatible and you can see that this is now this is the set now tell me something what is the set of x zeros that will make this zero by the way this this is to be for all t and all huh t cannot play a spoil sport here Right, because uh, no, in 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 uh, when I say that the set is zero, it has to be zero. T there can be no T and all happening there. Right? It has to be for all T. T cannot mess it up. Huh? So I'm looking at set of all initial conditions, right? Such that this product is zero. How did we get this product? Just from here, plugging in the solution for x. Okay, just from here we get this just plugging in the solution for x nothing magical and expanding the exponential and rewriting it in an appropriate matrix product form that is it. I mean if you even if you are not convinced about this you can go back and think about it that is not a problem this is it will come out to be like this. Now tell me something when will this be 0 for what x zeros will this be 0 anybody <laughs> yes <laughs> good call. For x0 equal to 0, yes. Uh, can you give me a slightly more complicated, uh, difficult answer? Like, is that the only choice of x0 for which this will be 0? See, because this can do nothing, right? Like, you can pretty much forget about this. Because this is all a function of time. And all this 0 thing has to hold for all time. So, obviously, this product has to become 0. This product has to become 0. When will this product become 0? Huh? Yeah, yeah, somebody was saying something. Whoever said that word? Null space. Huh? Null space, whenever x0 is in the null space of this matrix. What is the null space of this matrix called? I think you guys have either not done this uh, linear system very well or uh, you have forgotten. Hmm? Unobservable subspace.
unobservable subspace. The null space of this matrix is called the unobservable subspace. Sab bhool gaye. All right. Okay. No problem. Okay. And this is called the unobservable subspace. Okay. So, whenever x0 belongs to the kernel of the observability matrix or the basically x0 belongs to the unobservable subspace, only for those x0, this is 0. Okay. Okay. All right. And once you can find any one x0 like that, you have created a trajectory, right? Because, yeah, you understand, right? As soon as I give an initial condition, I, I have solved this, I obtained a trajectory, right? So, for every x0 in the unobservable subspace, I get one such trajectory, right? Now, if you say there is nothing but the trivial solution, what are you saying then? You are saying that there is no x0 in the null space other than 0 itself. Okay, so, null space is empty is how we say it. Yeah, 0 we do not count. Yeah? So, we are saying the null space of the observability matrix is empty which means system is observable. Okay? System is ob so, what we have just codified in this slightly more complicated language is just the fact that system is observable. Okay. What we are calling this zero state observability is actually the observability condition that you have for linear systems. At least for linear systems, it boils down to that. For nonlinear systems, you can have slightly more complicated notions of everything, yeah? which is why it is called zero state observable. Yeah? So, basically you are saying that if you, if you write this condition out for linear time invariant systems, all you are saying is that the system is observable, that is it. Okay, all right. Makes sense. No confusion. All right. This. Ah, okay, okay. Your question is why do we say that the system is unobservable? Okay, why do we say that? The, uh, I defined observability as being able to identify the initial conditions from the outputs. Okay, that was the idea. Now, if you look at this expression, yeah, or or I mean, or basically this guy is just this guy. Uh, if you look at this expression, the question is, can I reconstruct x zero from y? That's the question I am asking. Okay. Now, if the system is observable. Let us look at the good case. System is observable means this is maximal rank. Observability means it is maximal rank. This is where only then the kernel will be 0. Right? So, what is the maximal rank? P. Right? Because it is it is an P by n matrix. Wait a second, did I get this correct? Is this the P by n matrix or not? C is P by n. C is P by n. This is also P by n. It is not a p by n matrix, ridiculous. I was wrong. This did not correct me. This is a this matrix is a what? P by n times p matrix. Is that correct or not? See, this C itself is a p by n matrix, right? So this is also a p by n matrix, right? Wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. C is P by N. First of all, this is all messed up. Uh, anyway, that is fine. It is supposed to be written in that way. C is P by N. This guy is also P by N. Everything is P by N. And how many such entries do I have? But this seems wrong to me. It is very wrong. Yeah. Actually, this is not the observability matrix itself. This transpose is the observability matrix. This is the observability matrix itself, actually. Uh, so, it is C, C A. That is why it is all coming out to be messy in my head. Yeah, because actually, uh, I am sorry. It is just vector, arranging the vector in matrix multiplication. Nothing magical. This product, like I said, can be written as this guy. And this is the observability matrix, the transpose, with the transpose. So, now the dimensions are okay. What is the dimension of this? 
it is what uh, p by n n p cross n right n p cross n thank god it is becoming uh, n p cross n did I get this right abhi gadbar lag raha n p cross n then to this product is not compatible I did not get this right then it is some function of t times c c a c a n minus 1 times x 0 equal to 0 ok. This is now correct yeah because uh, this was an n p cross n matrix the observability matrix is an n p cross n matrix and the x 0 is an n by 1 vector this is now correct ok <laughs> all right big mess. But the basic point is this expression here can be written as this ok. Now, if this can be written as this yeah and we are saying that this guy is full rank or maximal rank. What is the maximum rank of this guy? n yeah, because p is of course greater than equal to 1. So, it is n. So, it will be an n ranked matrix ok which means what? Which means what? So, basically you have some n ranked matrix multiplying x 0. It is a solvable system of linear equations huh? it is a solvable system of linear equations ok. The simple if you want to think more simply assume p is 1 single output it is a single output system ok. If it is a single output system then this is an n by n matrix. So, basically what you have is a n by n matrix multiplying x 0 hmm? which means it is an invertible matrix. So, I can invert it and get a my initial condition ok. So, that is the whole idea I need to be able to compute the initial condition from the given data which what is the data? Data is the measurements that is observability. Therefore, if you have anything in the unobservable subspace yeah. So, these are all <laughs> funny it is it is a funny thing see just think about this ok. If I have multiple points in the unobservable subspace x 0 1 and x 0 2 ok. For both of them this is equal to 0 correct. For both initial conditions my measurement was 0. For both initial conditions my measurements along the trajectory are 0. So, I, for I cannot distinguish the two initial conditions anymore ok. Which is why this condition there can be no trajectory, but the trivial trajectory in this set. Okay. So, anyway this is itself a very nice subtle topic it is not that easy to follow which is why and also I am not teaching this I am more it is more haphazard. So, I was just trying to make a comparison yeah in linear systems the idea of observable unobservable controllable uncontrollable this in itself is a relatively involved topic I mean you have to sort of wrap your head around it takes a little bit of time ok. But the idea is if you have unobservable subspaces then you will have initial conditions which are indistinguishable by measurements. You can take you know measurements and you will not be able to distinguish ok between the two initial conditions ok. So, I mean you can even say simply something like let me see uh, if you have y equal to c e a t x 0 1 and also equal to c e a t x 0 2 if these are the same this is the measurement right and two different initial conditions I have the same measurements huh? then then basically this is these two are indistinguishable ok. And if these are indistinguishable what did I just prove that C E A T notice x 0 1 and x 0 2 are different I just proved that x 0 1 minus x 0 2 is in the null space and x 0 1 minus x 0 2 is non zero not a trivial vector. So, it is in the null space of this 
which means observability matrix is not maximal rank. So you can go both ways, yeah, and you know sort of understand that you uh, observability that is being able to construct initial conditions from measurements requires that observability gramian or observability matrix be maximal rank okay and that condition is what for nonlinear systems is codified in this uh, sort of zero state observable idea yeah again why it has this funny name is because observability has multiple there are multiple observability and controversy notions in uh, in nonlinear systems okay so more complicated okay so that's the only reason why we have these multiple notions any questions so two two important definitions passivity this we have not sort of connected to linear system we might later on as of now no need to connect it it's a, just a general notion or a general property of systems and the zero state observability which we have connected to observability of linear systems all right okay